situations and permission to trim sucker roots without a permit which would be under a half an inch on your oak trees and things you always have those little sucker roots and so you're going to be able to do those um, also the fee schedule was not um, addressed and so we've addressed that in permitting fees the duration of the permit um, we've moved that to section for continuity into division one we wanted to consolidate everything that had to do with permitting into division one and the posting of the permit where to post it also moved to section one for continuity in division two which is the planting removing and care of trees there were many repetitive sections and so what we did was consolidated the language referring to actions allowed under this section and reorganized them for ease of understanding. They had opaque latex paint for treatment of cuts and wounds. We added asphaltic wound paint and limited latex and oil-based paints to black. Um, I, I would hate to see the day that we have pink paint or yellow paint um, and it would be allowed in our current code. Uh, also, the provide for notification of suspected oak wilt. All you had to do before was call the city manager. So what we want is some remediation and we wanted to put some teeth into it. So we partnered with the State Forest Service, which is the partner that we should be uh, partnering with. It's of no cost to the city and it's not limited only to the remote removal of diseased red oak but it's inclusive now of all oak trees. Granted, red oak is the most susceptible to oak wilt, but we still have to address the white oaks and the other ones. Um, also, the penalty in the middle of the section stated a fine of no more than $500 for each day of violation. We moved it to section 48108, and what we're doing is referring back to section 1-17 of our code, which deals in all the fees. So every time we may want to change a fee, we can just go to 1-17 and that will address all of our fees and we won't have to go back and amend every code. So we're not changing any fees here? No, we're not changing any fees here. We're moving it to refer back to where our, our general fees are that way, if, if we little by little, as we start amending these ordinance, ordinances, we move them, we move the penalty to that general penalty, then when we amend that, we don't have to go back and amend everyone and run the risk of missing one. Okay. Thank you, Diane. Move to approve. Thank you. Uh, I was going to ask for a moment. Okay, so we have a... We have a motion, we have a second. Discussion. Discussion, go ahead, Douglas. In section 48-77, section B, individual residents of the city who, individual residents of the city who trim, prune, remove, plant, or place any oak tree, or who trim, prune, remove, plant, or place any other tree shall apply for and be entitled to a permit without charge. I find this amazing that the city wants to get a permit from people who live here to plant a laurel tree or any other type of little tree that they want to plant. I think this is overreaching by a huge scale. I can understand oak trees, but any other tree to me goes way beyond public health and safety. That's one thing I would remove or any other tree. So amend the motion. I will. I plan to. The next one is section 48-105. If oak wilt is confirmed, the measures recommended by the State Forest Service to control and prevent the spread of the oak wilt shall be initiated to prevent the spread of the oak wilt infection. My question is, who pays for this? So I would have it put in here, any uh, Proactive measures should be paid by the individual homeowner. Well, it's in the fee. We already said that. Is that correct, Mr. Cloud? Didn't you say that that charge was already in the fees? That's what I read. Uh, I think you, I 
think Councilman Gregory is talking about who will pay for the removal of oh, the Oh, I thought you said that was part of, that we had that in fees. I'm sorry, that's what I understood. For measures recommended by the State Forest Service to control and prevent the spread of the opioid. No, we have a fine. Huh? Oh, you have a fine. fine. Okay. So these measures just says shall be initiated. So the fine it pays. Who pays. The fine pays for it. Does the fine pay for it? That's the question that he's asking. Who pays for the? Remote? No. Um, I, I would um, recommend that you just put all measures shall be paid by the homeowner or by the resident. Add that as an amendment, Doug. Add that as an amendment. Those are the <coughs> only two things, and I would like to offer those two amendments at the appropriate time. Okay, thank you. I'll make sure that you're called back. Mr. Uh, Paul, did you have any questions or comments or on this? I, I can't. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. His first uh, uh, possible amendment that he talked about, uh, reiterate that, Douglas. Uh, it was 48. Um, to remove or plant or replace any other tree. 48 dash 7 7. Yeah. And, and, and when it said that, did it mean any other tree or did it mean another tree like the oak that has a problem? And, and in other words, do we need to clean that up or? or not mess with that. That's what I'm asking. In the preceding part of the uh, sentence, oak tree is clearly stated. Yeah, tree. I know. Hmm. Actually, um, Councilman Gregory, if, if we could put oak tree in there. Um, that would solve Place it. any other oak tree because. That's what we um, protect against. Well, we have place any oak tree. I'm sorry, he is asking place any other tree. No, we can take that out because we've addressed the oak tree in the beginning. Would everyone please make notice and make that appropriate in the amendments to the original item? Thank you. Mr. Squire, did you have anything to say? Yeah, a couple things. Uh, <laughs> thank you for allowing me to legally mow my lawn again. <laughs> I appreciate that and remove broken branches off my roof without having to go to jail now. Appreciate that too. There's two things I wanted to see, I wanted to see in there. So I'm not gonna be a criminal for trying to maintain my property. But I, uh, uh, I do agree with, with Mr. Gregory. Um, you know, if I'm gonna plant a, uh, a laurel tree or a, or a, a, a orange, or, orange tree, um, or if I'm going to be pruning my orange tree uh, as I as I go forward, is picking oranges considered uh, is, is that considered pruning? I don't know uh, at what at what point you you would call that or not. So um, I'd like to see that modified to where we don't get somebody in trouble for doing something like that. Also, too. So I'll wait. I'll wait for Mr. Doug, uh, 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 Councilman Gregory's uh, amendment. But that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Squire. Mr. Uh, Daggett, do you have any questions or comments for? Clarification, so under okay. section 48-77, it's other trees. The way it's gonna read it will be in 48-77B, individual residents of the city who trim, prune, remove, plant, or place any oak tree shall apply for and be entitled to a permit without charge. We're just deleting the words we're addressing other trees. And that's pretty much an a, B, C, I mean, a lot, or a lot of them have to do with other trees, too, in those. So that's in A, that's in B. Say, say that again. It, I mean, throughout that, through A, it talks about other trees. B, it talks about, I think, other trees. So that's in several places it talks about. You have to get a permit for other trees, too. Well, A only addresses, or is intended to address contractors. Okay. So just and put in any it. other oak tree for any trees. Do I have to have a contractor get a permit to do a non-oak tree? Yes. Yeah. They're doing work in our city. Oh, we call it. Okay. All right. Okay. 
Thanks for Mr. Daggett. Ms. Winger, did you have any questions or no, comments? I think those are great. Thank you very much. Okay, we have some uh, housekeeping on amendments to do, I think. Douglas, did you have those ready to move I forward? Have, uh, yes. Uh, I may have a third one. Under 48-77, it should read, individual residents of the city who trim, prune, remove, plant, or place any oak tree shall apply for and be permitted to a permit without charge removing or who trim, prune, remove, plant, or place any other tree. Second item on 48. Wait, 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 let's do them separately. Okay, so uh, is that a motion? Oh, do I want not he's making, he's one, making amendments. Oh, you want to bundle them? Okay, go ahead. The second would be 48-105. I would add as Wait, 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 wait. 48-105. Okay. I would add as a concluding sentence. All creative measures shall all measure measures shall be paid for by the homeowner. Period. That's at the end. Yes. Oh, measures. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll second all, that. Yes, all, yes, all measures. Sec that's, that's an amendment. I'll second it. And the last one. Oh, we, I forget who brought it up. I think it was uh, Mr. Daggett. I, I would eliminate in section forty-eight dash seven seven any person. And I would then start it with any individual firm. No, I would take away any person. No, what what are you talking about? Forty-eight seventy-seven. Forty-eight dash seven seven. I would yeah, eliminate. Yeah, but which there's what A or B or C? A. Or, okay. I would eliminate any person, comma individual, and start with any firm, corporation, contractor, etc. Okay. Okay. Those are my three motions. Does everybody understand the three motions? Okay, all right, we have a motion on the table. Does anybody second those three motions as bundled? Okay, Mr. Paul seconded. We have a motion by Mr. Gregory. Mr. Brennan, are you okay with that? I have a question that? about the last change. Hang on. I have a question about the last change that you made on, on 4877A. Um, what if you have a gardener? It's a firm. Well, that's not a firm. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, uh, and Douglas, I was trying to figure out what you were saying. If you have a sole proprietor uh, driving around town with a, a ladder in the back of his truck, does he have to have a a, a, a permit? Okay. 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 Does everybody understand what they're voting on? Yes. yes. Okay. So we have a motion by uh, an amendment to the motion by Mr. Uh, Gregory, we have a second by Mr. Paul. All in favor of that amendment? Okay, that's okay. Let's go back to the original, which is consider approval of the ordinance 2016012A, amending 48 vegetation, of repealing Article 3, other trees, and adopting Article 3, Chapter 48, in the place of former Article 3. Do uh, all in uh, we've already got a motion on the table and we got a second. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you, Council. Okay, so let's move on to consider the regard of the consider action regarding approval of resolution R2015 0112 approving the City of Castle Hill certified tax roll for the year 2015. Diane, will you explain this item, please? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Mayor and City Council, the Office of the Tax Assessor Collector has provided the City with a summary of the values and levies for the City of Castle Hills. Section 26-09E of the State Property Tax Code requires that the tax roll be approved by the governing body of the taxing unit. The City's tax roll has been certified for the year 2015 at $2,928,698.78 in ad valorem revenue. I recommend City Council approve the ordinance for the City of Castle Hills tax roll for the year 2015. Do I have I'll a motion? Move. Okay, we have a motion. Do I have a second? Mr. Second by Mr. Squire, all in favor? Discussion. Discussion. Second. Yes, sir, go ahead. On percentage, am I reading these numbers right that almost 20% of the properties in Castle Hills not taxed. What does that have to do with what we're voting on? I'm just look, asking a question oh, about okay. the numbers. I 
can ask if that's what it comes out to you see the market <laughs> value and the taxable value a lot of people have um, homestead or over 65 all those different exemptions so this is what they've certified that's what i have to go by is this is they've claimed it we're agreeing to it the individual has claimed an exemption by approving this to mean mean we agree to the, the exemption does that have anything to do with the item on the table okay well it's a valid question he's asking but you all uh you're you're way past that i mean you don't have any power to object to the to the tax roll once it's set by the tax assessor okay. thank you so much for that question douglas okay so with that said all in favor it's unanimous again all right here we go last but not least item 10. well wow, i've got a record here Well, then let's let's wait on that because I want to I want to go ahead and move down the list here. It's not last, but it's second to the last then on the consent agenda. And Leslie, I'm going to give you all the time you want to explain this. OK. Item 10, the city council will review and discuss the proposed ordinance prepared by the city attorney calling a special election for May the 7th, 2016 to consider a proposition to decide whether VIA will continue in the city of Castle Hill, and if VIA is discontinued, <clears throat> to consider a proposition to decide whether the city of Castle Hill's municipal development district will be created for the purpose of financing development projects beneficial to the district to be funded by one half of 1% sales tax. Final approval of the ordinance calling for the election will be scheduled for February the 9th at the city council meeting that's 2016 at the city council meeting Diane will you explain this item mayor and city council a vote is scheduled to take place in May 2016 to let the voters decide whether to continue the via sales tax in Castle Hills or not at the December meeting, the City Council instructed the City Attorney to come up with language for the special election. If the voters decide to discontinue the VIA sales tax, there are several options available to redirect that tax. The purpose of this agenda item is to review and discuss the ordinance that will call for the special election. Thank you, Diane. Do I have a motion for this item? Mr. Paul moves. Mr. Daggett seconds. Uh, discussion? Yes, I have a problem with this. If you approve, if you disapprove Proposition 1, and you, no, if you approve Proposition 1 and, dip, and, and do not approve Proposition 2, then what happens? You don't have VIA, and then you don't get the money. This is to establish an election from the way I understand it, and it, it's not? Well, uh, what Douglas says is correct. I mean, if the, if the voters discontinue VIA, but disapprove the establishment of the MDD, then there's no MDD. Why can't you combine the two propositions? And is that correct, Mr. Brown? Yes, you've got to have separate, you need to have separate propositions. Douglas, the only thing, it allows you to be on the same ballot, but they have to be separate propositions. Yeah, they can be on the same ballot, but everybody else. Yeah, that's what I just said. But my, but my point <laughs> is, the way this is, <laughs> we could lose VIA and not get the benefit of losing VIA. That's true. That's true, but then we would have to bring it back. Is that correct? Yeah, if you want to, yeah. We could bring it back as another... Uh, another special could, election, yeah. Could we bring it back at the next council meeting? Does this require a vote? I don't know whether it does. It's oh. a sales tax. Everything that goes through the sales tax is allowed to be paid. Yeah, you, you all, uh, you need to figure out what, what kind of sales tax you want to replace VIA. And uh, my recollection from everything I've heard is that this is the type of sales tax that you all have well, chosen. I agree, this is the type I want, but. Okay. Douglas, you, you created crime control. Also, 
so Mr. Brennan, if the sales tax, if the sales tax, excuse me for interrupting, if the sales tax passes, but the municipal district doesn't pass, then where are we at? Okay, if, if you vote to discontinue VIA and you vote to establish the new sales tax and you've, you've replaced one tax with another tax. But if VIA is discontinued and the uh, MDD is, is uh, rejected, then you're, you're back with, um, you know, no, no sales tax for, the, for, those, for those two purposes. And the other option, the other variable is, is if you vote to continue VIA, then uh, the effect of the vote on the second proposition is a nullity. You know, Hang on, Mr. Paul. Hang on, you, you're next. Okay, got it. Mr. Paul? Yeah, uh, what you're stating is if the voters don't read the ballot, which is always a possibility. Now, that being said, uh, if they vote to remove VIA, if the citizens vote to remove VIA and don't do this, they sh the following election, which is six months, is something we could put it back on because it's going to take at least six months, if not longer, to be paying VIA back anyway. Am I that, making? That's, that's all correct. Yes. Sir. Okay. Good. So, so hopefully they'll get done. If not, we'll we'll be prepared for it for the November vote and have the uh, structure in place, making the assumption that it will pass. Mr. Okay. May Mr. Uh, Squire, did you have any brief comments to make? Thank you. Oh, thank you. Mr. Daggett, did you have? Uh, Just clarification, brief, Mr. Uh, Brennan. There's, so if you, the voters reject something, you can bring it back again and they can approve or reject it again? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Ms. Winger. Um, yeah, the city has the right to educate the public on the two ballot propositions. We do not have the right to promote or you know, take a position one way or the other, <coughs> but we do have the right to explain to people in writing, on the website, but wherever you want, this is what it means, period. Uh, Mayor, can I make one comment? Of to course. Dr. Daggett's, you know, I said that as a general statement. I think on these particular propositions, you can come back. I do remember that in the sales tax for I think it's street maintenance. If that loses, you can't come back, you know, at the next election and try it again. I think you have to be wait a year before you can re reissue that. Good. Okay. All right. So we have a uh, motion. We have a second, I believe. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you, Council. Okay. Um, Wait, wait, wait a minute, Mayor. What what had just happened there? Was there a vote? Yes, yeah. we passed. But really, this was not on here as an action item. It's just uh, uh, we were presenting. Oh, you're exactly right. It, it's a discussion item to present to y'all. Sorry. Hear y'all talk about it. And I then messed we'll up. Have it's it getting late. Action item. It'll be an action item in yes, February, yes. but we all agreed that it will go, move on to the February agenda. Yes, sir. That's right. It's February. Okay. We could have disagreed. <laughs> Yes, that is the proper time. And in fact, there will be uh, another election ordinance at the same time for the regular election. For Got it. All right. It's just okay. kind of an advisory. Uh, I'd, I'd like to move to approve the consent agenda. All right. That's and good. And I have a comment. Of course. I would Take as like much time to as compliment you need, our Williams. city secretary, Kimberly Clinton, for doing a fabulous job on the minutes. I, and I'll, I'd like to add to that. I think this is the first time ever that uh, we have. Okay. <laughs> and, and also, I'd like to make a comment. The way she did the notes and to put everything in chapters, yes. that's a tremendous amount of effort to do that yes. in the electronic version. Applause, applause, applause. <laughs> All right. Now, moving right along. Now she's going to want a raise or something. So anyway. All right. With that said. <clears throat> So we have a motion on the table on the consent agenda as written from Ms. Winger. Do I have a second? Okay. All in favor? All right, good. It's approved. Reports, city manager. Mayor and city council, the zoning review committee continues to meet and appear to be making great progress. Individual members are working with us on their individual assignments and any questions that need clarification. 
We are working on an updated election guide for the May election. Also, we are in talks with the Bear County Elections Administrator for the March primary. I mention this because it will be a very busy spring season with elections, and because of the early voting, our community room will be unavailable for longer than usual, so we'll need to plan accordingly. There will be a Board of Adjustment meeting on Wednesday, January 20th to hear an application from Michael and Sharon Brand at 103 Shalimar requesting a variance to allow extending a cantilevered carport roof an additional three feet from the front line of the house. I hope you have driven the intersection of Loop 410 and West Avenue. The eyesore that it once was is no longer. It is starting to shape up quite nicely. The digital billboard is operational and looks great. Poyo Tropical, located at 6007 West Avenue, is looking at a February opening. Staff continues to work with them on all permitting and inspections being done. Also, the Castle Hills Medical Office Building, located at 1973 Northwest Loop 410, is continuing construction and their permitting and inspections are ongoing. Doe Pizzeria located at 6963 Blanco is doing extensive interior renovations. The plan review was inspected for a food to go establishment. Because of the building containing asbestos, the city had to get a certified asbestos containing building material of ACBM letter certifying that the removal was accomplished in accordance with industry standards. Phase two of the master drainage plan is moving along. The drainage committee is meeting with Luis Cuellar and Brian Reese from Klotz Engineering later in the month to get updates on the priority two of the master drainage plan. We have received the bids for the second phase of the street and SAW's infrastructure repairs and will be calling a special meeting later in the month to bring it to council. There is still confusion on SB 273 as to signage, open meetings, and municipal buildings. The Attorney General still has not given his opinion. Also, HB 910, commonly referred to as open carry, became effective January 1st. The patrol officers have received training on different scenarios they may encounter. Our new patrol fleet is starting to arrive. We have received the step vehicle and it's getting all of its gear installed. You might notice it's a shiny silver uh, Tahoe, I believe. Tahoe. Um, that's all that I have for this report. Thank you, Diane. Next, we will go move on to uh, announcements by council. Leslie, do you have any announcements to make, please? Nope. Okay, uh, Matt. Yes, sir. Uh, John. Douglas. Frank. Douglas. Okay, uh, I just wanted to make one announcement. I am, I'm very proud that, that everybody is, is uh, moving forward on this uh, paperless thing. And also, I want to congratulate our city secretary, uh, Kimberly, on, on her first uh, month or two months. How long has it been now? Three months? God, man. Three months. She not only has... Uh, uh, set up our new use stream tonight we had over a hundred people log in and watch us and uh, uh, set all that up and apparently everything went very, very smooth uh, later on as you become a follower in this uh, there could be live chat going on not necessarily with us up here obviously but with uh, someone that we could designate to uh, have live chat to explain what's going on if they had any questions. So very proud to be the mayor today. So with that said, thank you and move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Thank y'all.